What's up guys and welcome to another episode of El Jardín Perito. Today, we're breeding chickens. All right, so I wanted to bring you guys along in the early stages of this kind of random chicken breeding project. So originally, before I even moved here, my first place um, where I kind of started things, I had some bantams. Somewhere along the line, I got some Yam Samani eggs and I incubated those, hatched them, and so I had the two different breeds. When I moved over here, I had them kind of separated and I was breeding the Yam Samanis and I had the Bantams just because um, that's what I started with. Though they both have like pretty cool qualities, um, different favorable traits. Uh, what happened was I inadmittently bred them because a dog got in here. Before I had a legitimate setup, I kind of had a couple of pens and a dog came in and absolutely ravaged all of the AM Samani hens. So they're a little more common now, but at the time, maybe four years ago, they're a little harder to come by. They were pretty pricey. So I improvised and mated the one rooster I had left with my hens that were bantam, specifically silver laced. I'll show you guys some footage, but um, I got an interesting interbreed there of kind of mostly black with some silver lace. And But the one really good attribute is that these AM Samani mixes became really broody. So yeah, my Bantams were notoriously broody and that's definitely a great trait to have. Um, they've been multiplying themselves. I haven't had any problems. It's been awesome. So in doing a little more research and wanting to try a few things, um, I figured, you know, what if they had different colored eggs? So I'm gonna raise some Easter Eggers and I've actually seen crossbreeds of AM Samanis and Easter Eggers and they're pretty cool as well as, you know, their functionality. I also wanted to do this because they're a little larger. Um, they're not exactly a meat bird. I don't really want meat birds. Meat birds typically reach their maturity really fast, so fast that their bodies can barely keep up with it. Um, your traditional birds that are raised commercially. So I don't really want to go that route. I just want like a naturally larger bird. So yeah, that's one. And what I did with that was I had the broody uh, bantam mix hen and she was hatching some of her own eggs. So as the eggs were hatching, she only had one chick successfully hatch in that clutch, but I did kind of remove her early and pull her from what would have been probably a larger clutch. So yeah, one night I slipped the little Easter eggers under there and she adopted them. So another breed that I'm interested in intermingling, and this kind of goes back and forth. I may have some exclusive flocks and I may selectively breed, kind of playing with both, but I do have some black Sumatras. Similar in a way, um, in some ways, to the AM Samanis, but uh, they're usually black, usually have kind of yellow legs. I believe they're Indonesian. They ha they're kind of like off of game birds, kind of um, off of that line, but they have really beautiful long tail feathers and they're all black with kind of green highlights and undertones and sometimes purple hues. So I think that'll be a nice like aesthetic look to bring to the flock. All right, and the last one, um, fully just out of, well, primarily out of interest because I don't know, it's just interesting to me. If you're familiar with the red jungle fowl, jungle fowl in general are pre-domesticated chickens, basically. Basically all domesticated chickens or mutations um, that came off of those original. There's gray jungle fowl, there's green, there's Ceylon, there's, a few different ones, but they're mostly Indian and kind of Asia, but I got these red jungle fowls. I actually have, I got some eggs online and while I was getting eggs, just because insurance wise, and you never know, um, I saw some coincidentally the day after I ordered them at my local feed store. So I got a few chicks as well. So I have chicks and the other factor is, you know, male and female. I bought four chicks. Who knows if they're gonna be like four roosters or four hens, it was straight run. I do have my other Bantam hybrid sitting on those eggs. Um, I'm gonna let her incubate them. I think she's done a good job before. There's actually two of them right now. They have a big old clutch. And so what I'm doing here is, you guys may have seen some of the footage. Um, they're kind of scurrying around because it's nighttime and I scared them off the roost, but they're kind of like all over the place and there's some cool mutations and stuff. And even the broody mom is like almost all white instead of all black. 
um, being a Yam Samani, half a Yam Samani. But yeah, it's just interesting to me and I'm just going to kind of experiment and do some crossbreeding here and there and just see where it lands. But I wanted to kind of give you guys a prelude, show you a little bit of my setup, um, just to bring you on early along in the journey. Throw a comment down below if you have your own interbreeds and different crossbreeds and you'd like to share those. In some of my research, I saw some pretty out there stuff like uh, turkeys and chickens and pheasants and chickens interbreeding. I don't think I'm gonna take it that far. Even pigeons and chickens, it's like crazy. But um, yeah, I don't wanna take it too far, but I think what I'm ultimately trying to do here, just have like, you know, grab the best aesthetics and kind of see where it lands. All right, well, that's gonna do it for today's video. Be sure and subscribe if you wanna, you know, come along with this journey with me. I'll be doing some update videos as things go along, but I caught it early. I have like the baby chicks and all this stuff in the beginning phases. So as things progress, I'll keep you guys posted. All right, well, again, that's gonna do it for today's video. As always, thanks for tuning in. Until next time.